Today, we're going to talk about how to change unhealthy habits in your life and forgive and just let go of the past. Because when opening your psychic abilities, this is so important because what they do is cause blocks in your energy. And change, it's difficult but necessary in life. But changing patterns helps us move forward leaving the past behind us while releasing the fears that bind us. Stay tuned, and I'll be right back. Welcome to Spiritually Speaking Podcast. My goal is to teach you the elements of spirituality that will show you how to find your passion and purpose in life. I'm your host, Lisa Maria. So join me in another session of Spiritually Speaking. Welcome back to Spiritually Speaking Podcast. This is Lisa Maria. I am your host. And I'm here today to teach you how to let go of the past and start trusting again. Okay, I'm going to start with a a little story. that Because trust is a natural instinct we're born with. We just don't come out of the womb saying, Hey, Doc, I don't trust you. (laughs) It's not how it works, you know? So, I want to tell you a little story about what I thought was pretty cool about learning, about learned habits, should I say. Okay, so here's my story. I have eight cats, okay? Yeah, eight cats. I'm a cat lady. I'm called the Psychic Cat Lady. (laughs) Anyway, uh, every morning I feed them their meaty breakfast of canned food. Okay? They get so excited as they follow me from the place where I keep their canned food all the way to their bowls as they trip me along the way. When my youngest and smallest cat named Sugar was a kitten, the older cats would push her away from her bowl and eat her food. Sugar eats much slower than the others, so she likes when I put her bowl right beside me as I keep one hand on her back. She's so much calmer as she eats and is able to enjoy her breakfast without worrying if another cat is going to come steal her food. I have a three-level cat tree that is placed between a glass door and a window, so whoever gets done eating first gets the top seat, which they're all able to get a full perspective of both views out the window. After they're finished, Sugar will either sit there and guard her bowl or go to the top seat on the kitty tree. If she leaves her bowl unguarded, she'll get the top seat on the tree. If she stays and guards her bowl, then she loses the best view of the outside world. So how does she choose? The point to my story is that trust is a natural instinct we're born with. We're born fully trusting the world. We trust that our parents will take care of us while our survival needs will be provided for. We don't come out telling the doctor, like I said, put me back or I'll never trust you after this experience. When we experience betrayal, unfaithfulness, or other negative emotions, It tends to cause layers of what I call schmegma to be layered upon the trusting souls that we were born with. What happens is when we experience betrayal, our brain goes into protection mode. When we subconsciously see that the same experience could possibly happen again, our brain says, hell no, you remember when this happened with so-and-so? Do you want that to happen again? Protection mode is set automatically in our brains without us even realizing it. Just like my kitty Sugar, her food was stolen as a kitten. Now, as an adult cat, she feels the need to protect her bowl. It was set in her brain, in her neural pathways, that if she leaves her bowl, her food will be taken or stolen. Well, the same goes with human experience. What we have to do is reset those neural pathways in our brain that tell us to protect ourselves from specific situations. 
when we stay in our comfort zone and continue to feel safe by guarding our bowls, we're unable to climb to the top of our own tree of life. But when we let go of the past and stop guarding, guess what happens? We are able to climb to the highest point in our tree of life and climb to our highest potential at the very top so we can see the world from many different perspectives. Only then are we able to see the world with a whole new view. So let me ask you this. Are you still guarding your bulls? Why? What or who is stopping you from sitting at the top of your tree of life? What has to be done so we can move forward? We have to learn to change unhealthy habits. Change is difficult but necessary. Changing patterns helps us move forward, leaving the past behind us while releasing the fears that bind us. We must become aware of unhealthy patterns before we can change them. From changing our clothes and our hairstyle to moving to a new home or even the death of a loved one. We all handle change differently, which can cause strife in our lives. Dictionary.com describes a habit as a settled or regular tendency or practice, especially one that is hard to give up. To give up an unhealthy habit, we must become aware of it so we can move forward in life. We must find out whether the habit is healthy or unhealthy and whether it is hindering or helping us. With that said, Let's find out how our brain works when habits are created. What happens is our neural pathways are set. Just like we set an alarm clock to go off at the same time every day, so do our habits and patterns that our brains were trained to do. For example, driving a car. Your first few lessons were a nightmare for you and your parents. Of course, until you had practiced enough that there were some patterns laid down. These patterns have been repeated so often that now you can drive home listening to the radio, speaking on the phone, hands-free of course, and thinking about your life. And you don't even remember the actual driving because it's so automatic. Another example is brushing our teeth in the morning. We get up and most of us automatically brush our teeth without truly thinking about doing it. Subconsciously, our brains were trained as a child to brush our teeth when we wake up in the morning. Our emotional and behavioral patterns run permanently and subconsciously. Just like the operating system runs in the background of our computer, and the various programs automatically launch as soon as they're turned on, as do our subconscious behavioral and emotional habits and patterns. We don't see them or even know that they're working. Subconsciously, they are all controlling everything that happens in our lives. Most of us live life completely unaware of the behavioral patterns and habits that we have programmed ourselves so well to do over and over, day after day. So where do patterns come from? In my opinion, patterns and habits can be the result of two things that go back to our childhood experiences or even further back in past lives. The first one is that we learned behavior that comes from our parents, caregivers, and peers as we're growing up. I remember when I was about five years old and I was sitting next to my father and he was biting his nails. I literally remember thinking to myself, my father's doing it, so it must be right. So I stuck my fingers in my mouth and started chewing away. Thank God I finally did kick the nail biting habit, but it took me into adulthood to finally become aware of the habit. I started looking at other people's hands and how nice they looked with grown nails 
and became aware of when I was doing it so I could stop the habit. When we're young, we're living in innocence. We depend on our caregivers to teach us and guide us in doing the right things. Which brings me to my next theory, fear and pain. I have a great example on how fear and pain relate to patterns and habits. In a session with one of my hypnotherapy clients, we were trying to figure out the trigger to his fear of singing in front of people. He had an excellent singing voice and owns a music producing company where he creates his own voiceovers. But it was not about the already recorded vocals because he did them without anyone around. It was about recording them with other people present. So, in a hypnosis session, I took him back to his childhood, asking him to find moments that he may have felt defensive or ridiculed about singing. He told me there was a time where he was about seven years old in school. The students were asked to write down on their paper what they wanted to be when they grew up. He wrote a singer. The child next to him leaned over from his desk, looked at his paper, saying what he wrote, and started making fun of him and laughing at the fact that he wanted to be a singer when he grew up. My client said he immediately scribbled it out and wrote something else, thinking that it was wrong because of his classmate making fun of him. So I asked him if he remembered what he wrote after he scribbled it out. He paused and said, Honestly, I have no idea what I replaced it with. I just remember him laughing at me. My point to this story is that there are childhood experiences that continue to affect us in our adult lives. When my client wrote he wanted to be a singer, he was laughed at. Now, in his adult life, he is uncomfortable singing in front of people for the fear of being judged or laughed at. Can you think of a situation or situations where you reacted instantly to something and you are not even sure what you're reacting to or why you're reacting that way? The speed of the brain's background operating system is quick to react because of past experiences. Before you know it, your brain has heard what someone said, started defending you, and blaming something or someone else. The brain has started the protection process because it is responding to the story that you are telling yourself from past experiences. It could be the story that you are not worth loving, or you're not good enough, or You'll never succeed. Whatever it may be, your operating system is trying to protect you from the first time that you ever felt that way. You don't know why you keep reacting that way. It's probably not the exact same situation every time either. But it still causes the same defense mechanisms or the same type of behavior or emotion to come out and start protecting you from the pain. What I recommend is to go back and explore the stories that you tell yourself. Because most of those stories are not even true. And only you can change the story. A million people can tell you that you're good enough and you can succeed. But until you believe it yourself, it will cease to happen. Now, there's four things that we must do when it comes to letting go of fears that are caused by unhealthy patterns in our lives. There are find it, face it, feel it, and free it. This does not happen overnight. So please give yourself and others the patience, time, and respect that you both deserve. We all learn in our own divine timing. So be gentle with others that may not be learning the same things that you are right now. It doesn't mean that you are better than them. 
it's sort of like a kindergartner and a third grader. It just means that you are both learning different life lessons right now. So let's begin with the four F's of forgiveness and letting go of the past. One, find it. We must become aware of the problem before we can fix it. We must know what we want to do to change the negative in our lives. What we are doing when we find it is becoming aware of the issue and admitting to ourselves that we have a problem to fix, which is not easy to do. (laughs) We don't change a tire unless it goes flat, right? And usually it isn't until we are aware of the slow leak or we actually got a flat tire that we admit that we have a problem. This is what we must do within our lives and usually we don't admit nor accept there is an issue until we experience some type of negative experience. Number two is face it. Have you ever heard about slaying your dragons? Now's the time. Now that we found the issue and became aware of it, we need to pick up our swords and start fighting back. We can't change others, but we can change how we react by responding instead of reacting to those that may cause negative emotions within us. Without facing our dragons, we're avoiding the awareness that is necessary to create change. So I want you to think about the people, places, and things that you need to either limit or eliminate in your life. You can either limit your time or eliminate them completely to start rebuilding your life. Feel it. We must be able to feel the emotions. If we do not feel the emotions attached to to the situations that we have experienced in the past and be able to change the story that we tell ourselves, we will not be able to release it. Without feeling it, we're avoiding pain. This is where our brains are protecting us. We must begin changing the story we tell ourselves or we will continue to live with the same reactions and negative habits. Change those roadblocks into detour signs. Work on rebuilding those roads into new positive roads. The last one is to free it. After feeling it and changing the story, we must release it and tell it that it no longer serves our higher purpose. We must begin believing that we are good enough and we are able to do anything we set our mind to do without allowing anyone else's opinion to get in our way. For example, I recently had someone tell me that my goals were not realistic and I set them too high for myself. Well, I could hold on to that and let them lower my goals or I can keep going and continue to rise up and accomplish the goals I set for myself. Lowering your standards for yourself is not the answer. Follow your heart, not what other people tell you is correct and good for you. Now, it can be emotionally challenging using this technique to let go. Know that it takes baby steps to heal. Don't get overwhelmed and try to release too many things at one time. Take one thing that you want to change in your life. Find it, face it, feel it, and free it by releasing it into the universe. Once you have accomplished that, move on to the next one, tackling one thing at a time. You don't want to try to take on all these emotional challenges at once and set yourself up for failure. Take one step at a time. This means after becoming aware of one habit or pattern, then start to create change for only that one pattern. Don't worry about the other ones during this time. Once you have slayed that dragon, you can move on to the next. And please, be gentle with yourself. 
Don't judge yourself or others and don't get down on yourself while exploring your emotions. It takes time, patience, and understanding to transform our lives and it takes baby steps to heal. It has taken years for your existing habits and patterns to become roadways in your brain so it can take time before they will go away. It takes dedication, time, and patience. Just like exercising your body, you need to exercise your mind. It's a muscle and needs to be retrained to think differently. Just believe that you can do it and it will happen. I have faith in all of you and know you can all do it. So, are you ready to see what is stopping you from moving forward in your life? Ask yourself these questions. What patterns are going on in your life that are interfering and blocking your joy? What do you do that you regret after you have done it? When you have arguments, are you blaming others or are you taking responsibility for your own actions? If things are not the way you want them to be in your life, are you blaming others or do you take full responsibility for your actions? So in a few minutes, I am going to start a guided meditation that is going to help you go back and view different parts of your life, whether this life or past lives. And you're going to approach four different windows. I think it's four or five different windows in the meditation. And what you're going to do is you are going to be viewing from an outside perspective different situations that have affected you greatly in the present. So be sure to journal about your experience after the meditation because then it gives you a starting point of where to start working or what to start working on. Okay? So hang in there. I'd like you to get into a comfortable position. And if you're not in a place where you can actually meditate at this moment, be sure to bookmark this uh, episode or video, whichever you're you're watching or listening to, and come back to it at a later time when you can give yourself 30 to 45 minutes to actually do this meditation because this meditation is amazing and you can repeat it as many times as necessary. Anything that helps you feel better is my goal, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Don't forget, get into a comfortable position. Make sure all your bings, beeps, and bongs are turned off so you're not interrupted in any way. And I will begin the meditation in a moment. Namaste. This meditation will take you back to view some experiences either in this life or in past lives. This meditation will help you find different experiences that may be holding you back or causing negative emotions or reactions. So I'd like you to sit back and relax. Close your eyes down naturally. You are not experiencing what you see. You will only be viewing it and you will be protected and guided by a spirit guide or an angel that will accompany you on this journey. So as you sit back and relax, allow your eyes to close down naturally and comfortably. Taking in a deep breath, And begin to let all the tension go as you release that breath. Sinking deeper and deeper down. Now take in another deep breath. 
and let it out slowly now, relaxing even more and more. As you continue to focus in on your own deep breaths, you'll find yourself relaxing more and more. Take in another deep breath and let it out slowly now. As you focus all of your attention on the gentle sound of your breathing, with each deep breath, allow yourself to relax even more. Breathing deeply and sending a warm feeling into your toes and your feet, allowing this feeling to dissolve any stress or tension. As you exhale, the tension just drains away. Breathing deeply and sending this warm, relaxing feeling into your ankles. Moving up to your knees and your thighs. Allowing any tension or stress to just melt away. And you're enjoying this opportunity to sink even deeper and deeper down. Now I'd like you to focus on the sound of my voice. And if you notice any outside noises, they will only bring you deeper and deeper relaxed. Now take in another big deep breath. And allow this warm, soothing feeling to flow up through your hips, into your stomach, into your lower back, and around your abdomen. Allowing the lower half of your body to completely relax. Letting all tension and stress just drain away. Enjoying this soothing feeling flow into your chest. And as you exhale, all heaviness just melts away. Allowing that warm, soothing feeling to flow into your back, softening all the muscles in your back, and sending warmth into each vertebrae, aligning your spine, and allowing this warm, soothing feeling to now flow into your shoulders and your neck. Feeling the tension just melt away. This deep relaxing feeling begins to flow down through each arm, into your elbows and forearms, down through your wrists and your hands, all the way into your fingertips. Your arms are now completely relaxed. Now this warm relaxing feeling flows into your throat and through your jaw, into your cheeks and through your eyes, and through your forehead, your entire face and head are now completely relaxed. Now I'm going to begin to count down from five to one, with each descending number you will allow your level of relaxation to double. Want that to happen? Allow that to happen. Five, deeper and deeper relaxed. Four, so calm and peaceful. 
three, letting go, and it feels so good to let go. Two, sinking even deeper and deeper down. One, you're now there, relaxing even more. Good, very good. Sinking even deeper and deeper down. Now, as you continue to enjoy this pleasant state of relaxation, I would like you to focus on the sound of my voice. As you continue to listen to my voice, you will allow yourself to become completely comfortable and relaxed, knowing you are safe and only viewing what is seen. You remain fearless and free from anxiety or stress. You know that any outside noises will only bring you deeper and deeper relaxed. And as you relax deeper and deeper, you begin to remove barriers and clear obstacles from your path. Now I'm going to begin to describe an image to you. Just allow your subconscious mind to follow along fearless and remaining free from any stress or anxiety and allow your conscious mind to stay completely relaxed. Now I want you to imagine and pretend if you need to. Imagine that you are in a small boat. It's floating in the water of a small beautiful lake very pleasant and the sun is shining as the breeze blows gently you look to your left and you see beautiful dolphins swimming along beside your boat you know you are being guided and protected by these dolphins they are taking you to where you need to go You look inside your boat, and there are big cushions laying in there, just perfect for you to just lie back upon. As you sink down into the softness of these cushions, imagine one arm draped over the side of the boat, your hands trailing in the cool, clear water. So refreshing. And so relaxing. And it's so calm and peaceful. You begin to become aware of the gentle, easy movement and rocking of that boat. Gentle, easy rocking motion is so pleasant and relaxing you even more. You just continue to lie there and allow your boat to drift and float with the gentle flow of the water. Going with the current as the dolphins guide your boat along. Going with the flow, so calm and peaceful sinking even deeper and deeper down. Now as you lay there upon these cushions, you begin to become aware of the beautiful blue sky above you. It's a beautiful day, perfect for you. Exactly the perfect temperature for you. Now you become aware of the warmth of the sun on your body, feeling all the muscles, nerves, and cells relaxing you and releasing any remaining stress or tightness. As you allow the sun's warmth to soak into you, 
from the top of your head to the tips of your toes, relaxing you even more as you sink deeper and deeper down. Now, in a moment, I'm going to begin to count down, and with each descending number, you'll sink even deeper and deeper down. And as I'm counting down, just allow yourself to enjoy that easy, gentle rocking of your boat as you continue to just go with the flow. When I count down to the number one, your boat will gently dock upon a sandy beached island. Five, drifting deeper and deeper down. Four, so calm and peaceful. Three, letting go and going with the flow. Two, sinking even deeper and deeper down. One, so pleasant as you continue to just drift and float. And now your boat gently docks upon the sandy beached island. slowly sit up in your boat as you see your dolphins happily swimming away from the island as they playfully jump in and out of the water. You step out of the boat and onto the sandy beach of this island. You're amazed by the beauty of this island. You close your eyes and take in a deep breath as you smell the scent of pine and maple trees. And you listen to the sound of silence. Take in the relaxing ambiance of this island. As you're listening to this silence, you begin to hear music in the distance. The divine sound of flutes and drums slowly flow together into one beautiful tune. You're curious, so you start to follow the sound of the music. You arrive where the music is playing and you see a group of people, some playing instruments and some are dancing, some are singing, but one specifically stands up and walks towards you smiling as if they were expecting you to come. They walk up to you and greet you with a warm and friendly welcome. Ask them their name. What is their name? This person will be guiding you on this journey. Are they male or female? What are they wearing? What do they look like? They begin to speak as they tell you that they are your spirit guide. They are there to guide and protect you on this journey. They point to a stone staircase that leads down into the ground. They tell you as they are pointing that this is where your journey begins. You and your guide walk to the top of the staircase. You look down and see it 
as it's well lit with oil lamps that line each side of the staircase. At the bottom of the staircase, there is an old wooden door. As I count from ten to one, you will arrive in front of this door. Ten, nine, safe and secure. Eight, seven, knowing that you are guided and protected. Six, five, more and more relaxed. Four, three, almost there. Two, and one. You are now standing in front of the door with your guide standing beside you. As your guide stands beside you, they tell you that as you go through this door, you will be viewing important past experiences from different ages in your present life. They ensure you that you are protected and they will be with you every step of the way. They continue to tell you that you are only viewing these experiences. You accept and feel comfortable and relaxed but excited at the same time to see what is behind the door. As I count to the number three, you will open the door and step inside of it. One, place your hand on the doorknob. Two, open the door and a bright light shines out. Three, step into the bright white light. You walk through the bright white light and arrive into a tunnel. Again, well lit with oil lamps lining each side. As you look forward, you notice five separate windows along the right wall. Your guide tells you that each window will show you a different experience from your past in your current lifetime. They will be five extremely important experiences that impact your life in the present moment and at your present age. Each window has a sign that tells you what age you were in that experience. And again, you know that you were only viewing these experiences. Now I'd like you to walk in front of the first window and look at the sign that shows the age. What age are you in this experience? Look into the window now. Who is there with you? What are you doing? What are the other people doing that are there with you? How do you see yourself feeling at that time? How do you feel at your present age as you watch this experience? Happy, sad, fearful, comfortable? How do you feel now about watching that experience? Do you feel there is anything during this time that is holding you back in your present life?
Is there anything during this experience that you need or want to let go of? What is a lesson that you think you may have had to learn during this experience? Now, I'd like you to walk forward and stand in front of the next window. Look at the sign and see what age you are in this experience. Who is there with you? And what are you doing? What are the other people doing? How do you see yourself feeling at that time? How do you feel at your present age as you watch this experience? Happy, sad, fearful, comfortable? How do you feel? Do you feel there is anything during this time that is holding you back in your present life? Is there anything during this experience that you need or want to let go of? Now, I'd like you to walk forward and stand in front of the next window. Look at the sign and see what age you are in this experience. Who is there with you? And what are you doing? What are the other people doing? How do you see yourself feeling at that time? How do you feel at your present age as you watch this experience? Happy, sad, fearful, comfortable? How do you feel? Do you feel there is anything during this time that is holding you back in your present life? Is there anything during this experience that you need or want to let go of? Now, I'd like you to walk forward and stand in front of the next window. Look at the sign and see what age you are in this experience. Who is there with you? And what are you doing? What are the other people doing? How do you see yourself feeling at that time?
How do you feel at your present age as you watch this experience? Happy, sad, fearful, comfortable? How do you feel? Do you feel there is anything during this time that is holding you back in your present life? Is there anything during this experience that you need or want to let go of? Now, I'd like you to walk forward and stand in front of the next window. Look at the sign and see what age you are in this experience. Who is there with you? And what are you doing? What are the other people doing? How do you see yourself feeling at that time? How do you feel at your present age as you watch this experience? Happy, sad, fearful, comfortable? How do you feel? Do you feel there is anything during this time that is holding you back in your present life? Is there anything during this experience that you need or want to let go of? Is there anything that you have learned while watching all these experiences? You will remember all these experiences and bring them back with you. You turn after the last window and you see another door that says exit. Your spirit guide tells you that this door will take you back to your present time and place. Your guide tells you that you will remember your experiences here and they will help you heal in your current lifetime. They tell you that you can call on them anytime you feel the need to do so and they will be there guiding you. They also tell you that you can return to this place If you ever feel there is something you need to let go of and heal from. Thank your guide for helping you and guiding you during this journey. Walk towards the door where it has the exit sign. And when I count from five to one, you will be back in this time and place feeling absolutely wonderful. Five, remembering everything that you have experienced. Four, knowing that you are always guided and protected. Three, etheric body closed. Two, more and more awake. One, eyes open, feeling absolutely marvelous. Thank you so much for listening to this meditation. Feel free to leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more great meditations and other videos. Have an awesome day. Namaste.